All right, so I think the last time we uh, met to discuss the streetscape plan was in October, November mm -hmm. um, time frame. And I think at that point, it was maybe 60, 70% down the road of, of identifying some conceptual alternatives to use some of the grant money you had. And since then, I've been refining that. Uh, Sarah and I have been in some conversations, mostly Sarah, uh, with DOT in terms of those next steps once this is in place um, to get the encroachment permits done that will allow the benches, the amenities, and the other landscaping to go in there. I still have some questions outstanding for the DOT staff, and we're hoping to meet with them either here in Silva on February the 8th to ask more specifics. I know they once things of where structures and the like will be placed, but I'm not certain what they require for uh, planning and other things mm -hmm. in terms of what they want from design drawings. Are you talking, Don, and excuse me for interrupting, yeah, but are you, when you're talking about structural, are you talking about our concrete pads or now furnishings? Yeah, anything okay. that's... Um, Fixed but not natural. Okay. I guess, and they, they may or may not differentiate between the two, but I was not clear um, in the discussion. Did I don't know if you had any clear about other that. clarification on that? No, it's mainly whenever you're installing anything in the right of way, like the concrete pads or mm -hmm. benches or trash receptacles, you're required to get an um, encroachment permit. So mm -hmm. we just need to make sure that we're all on the same page when we go to apply for this. Can you two get those encroachment permits for us or is that... That's what we're going to meet with them on about the specific process okay. and what they require because if, if it's a set of engineered or architecturally designed design plans that have to occur along the entire stretch mm -hmm. of the project, to me, it seems out of scale of what that <coughs> effort would cost to get those level of drawings to put in um, um, yes. a few thousand dollars. Where mm -hmm. you'd spend more design and putting together drawings than you would on everything that you're wanting to we put in. We could actually for pour the pads and have them put in place yeah. and hold it down by the time the drawings were done. Yeah, yeah and exactly. from my understanding, that if until funds are um, obtained for the sidewalk, Mm -hmm. You won't need that level of drawings. Just to get encroachment permits to do phase one of mm -hmm. this implementation of this plan, um, this plan should be adequate. And we'll solidify all of that with them on the 8th. I imagine it would be the town that mm -hmm. wouldn't be the actual applicant, um, but we can assist you with that. Okay. Yeah. And what we were planning to do sometime in February, we, the meeting with the DOT we're scheduling for February 8th, um, and if maybe that morning we can have a walk through with a couple of you and a, and a town representative just to kind of go through what, what I saw in the field and do the assessment so you get a sense of translating that from what's as an image in the document to what we saw out there mm -hmm. in the field and making some of these recommendations. Okay. Any other questions, process wise? Okay. So I'll walk you through some of the things, especially for those of you that hadn't been to some of the meetings. So this is the the image in front of the Village Shopping Center. One of the things with US 129, when states across the country went through and improved routes like this, there was a requirement of a certain right-of-way width for a US highway route. Um, and it was usually on the order of around 100 feet. So you're blessed through Robbinsville that it's not four or five lanes wide and all of that space wasn't used up. So where you have something like in the parking lot here where you can see the utility line running through, that's a pretty good indicator of where the right-of-way actually exists, even if property owners have been using the public right-of-way for things like parking spaces and chickens and, and other things um, <laughs> that are there. And in some spots along the corridor you have green space and buffers that like the Microtel and them have put right. in that space, which looks pretty good, but older development um, doesn't always have that. So that was what we used were the, the DOT um, drawings from the resurfacing project that defined the right-of-way. Um, so we have a PDF file, uh, three of those for the corridor. So you can see the route through here. Here's the shopping center. But this <coughs> pink line is the actual public right-of-way line. Um, and so for the everyday user, the pedestrian and others, they don't 
differentiate between the two. They probably think the road right away ends where the road does, but in this case, there's a lot of space um, on the back side of the sidewalk to place things. <coughs> um, <coughs> this image here, see if I, can, I don't know if I can zoom into it. To me, this is the most important thing to consider where you're placing stuff, and that's what's called the site triangle. That if I'm a car coming out from this driveway, I want to be able to see and have a clear line of sight of vehicles and other users. So DOT um, requires that this sight triangle be clear of any type of <coughs> uh, vertical obstruction. So it's a place to not put the crepe myrtles, not put um, other things. Usually a bench or a single is not <coughs> going to conflict with it, but it's a good practice to stay outside of that. So if you're out in the field with folks locally, it's pretty easy to walk off this 70 feet down the road and 20 feet back, put in some stakes and kind of see what that site triangle looks like. And I imagine with their encroachment permits, that's what they'll um, be looking at the most, making sure it doesn't conflict with that site triangle. Um, this image in the upper right is kind of the optimal. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Did you say 20 feet? Your drawing show 10 feet. Is it 10? Okay, I could read what was up there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I want to be sure it's yeah. changed. <laughs> you think between a new computer and a new projector, the image would be a little clearer. It's probably the our lack Ooh. of an extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> it's golden enough. <laughs> Maybe I need to invest in the HD cable. Um, so working from the Reimagining Robbinsville project, the intent of, of this one and what we'll talk about with the pedestrian plan was to take those big picture ideas and concepts and bring them down to kind of that technical level and, and start drilling into that. So this concept here is what I would consider the optimal of what you'd be looking for to implement along the bypass with at least a five foot street side green zone for uh, usually grass and some road signs go there, a minimum five foot sidewalk, and then behind that, because we have all of this additional right of way space, where you could put the trees. And looking at spacing configurations, especially for crepe myrtles, those are recommended at a 15 foot spacing on center from the base of the tree. Um, three foot minimum from the back of the sidewalk for placement of those, just so you don't get root heaves and other things. Um, in most cases along this corridor where you have the space, I would go farther just to protect the future investment and then certainly any ornamental shrubs or grasses can go in there. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, any idea if we're going to get a lot of pushback from the business owners along the road? My feelings are and that they want to preserve the parking space. They've got, they really don't understand that they would have more shopping if they all parked in the back, if the workers did and created that walking zone that we'd like to create. That would create, encourage more people in automobiles to stop and shop. It does me. That's been my personal appearance, like down in Florida and in mm -hmm. other cities where they've got a pretty green state. You'll get out and see what's in those stores. But, and maybe we could have a, invite the merchants to come and have a little education class and uh, teach them what we've learned. And maybe that would encourage them to uh, cooperate a little more. They feel like they're giving up something so valuable, all that parking, to get more customers. And I can understand that. I don't remember her name now, but the... Um, K. Yeah. K. K. Yes. To the one of the early meetings mm -hmm. here and, and was very receptive um, to the idea behind the plan because I, I, I think she recognized the improvement mm -hmm. that it would be to her property and hopefully that's the, the avenue you can take with mm -hmm. other business owners as well. And there are also always opportunities for reconfiguring the parking lots as well. So mm -hmm. losing spaces for a sidewalk doesn't always mean they're gone forever if right. you can reconfigure the current spaces. Right. I guess well, my, my question really centers around the business owner's ability to torpedo this plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, can they? I mean, well, 
the town has to approve this. Mm -hmm. But if they get a lot of business owners complaining, mm -hmm. of course they don't want that. Mm -hmm. And I can understand where everybody's coming from, but I also think education can go a long way. If they could see, and maybe even I could do some research that shows uh, some of our other towns that have grown since doing streetscape plans. Look at ones. Got a nice little downtown. All the populations have grown much more than Graham County. I think there's some things on this. I try to, in my field work and in these, to be very cautious um, about what I recommended for some of the properties because of, of that concern. Because mm -hmm. there, there's two sides. One, you have a very right, wide public right of way. So right. that's public space being used for a private purpose. Right. Um, but, you know, in, in the same way, probably in front of many of our houses, the mm -hmm. right of way line goes well into our yard and we have fence, pen, fences and flower boxes and trees there. We don't want to see those, you know, go any more than the parking that means you know, it has the same value right. to business owners. So I try to be very sensitive in this. And, and where I showed that ideal, it may not be possible in the near term on, on maybe 30 or 40 percent of the corridor because of that and other constraints. Not to say that you can always avoid that and you won't have it, um, but I think on the south end of the corridor where you've had the newer developments that have the green buffers, mm -hmm. you have the example there right. of that enhancement and what it um, can look like to maybe serve as an example of the others. The, the most uh, constrained places for that are right there with the Village Shopping Center mm -hmm. and the properties across from it. Not just from the space standpoint, but of the wide driveway aprons and other things that in an ultimate implementation of this consolidate a driveway point um, and reduce some of those conflicts. They naturally find they get a, a, some extra space on their mm -hmm. property for some parking by just making one in, one out driveway and uh, creating something better in between. And those are the, the positives we can use to convince them that this may be a better option. I think the education is definitely a requirement because what you do, you, you go drive down there and you see all of a sudden that the restaurant has put their menu basically on different posts out there. Right? They're trying to suck in everybody they can because times are tough. Right? Sure. I can understand that. If we, if we prevent them from doing that, and I surely hope we can because those things look terrible, we need to give them some other avenue, a better looking sign. Maybe the village sign there now maybe needs to be improved. Maybe, maybe even some space to put a couple of daily specials on it or something. But something that looks good and not these sticking Mm -hmm. Brenda, do we have any businesses on the bypass that would be severely hampered by by this taking of this property? I think from a, from an advertising point of view, it's a, the biggest concern. I think the, the parking area could probably be reconfigured if you had straight-in parking mm -hmm. to give you about the same amount of space as you've got now. But I think a lot of people want people to come down there, drive down the bypass, see something, and pull it. If we put tree, crate mills in, they grow up, and they're right about the same height as their uh, Marquis, then they, I think they're going to be resentful because yeah. people can't see them. Shoo, they're through. Yeah, so I, I think, think the we same have to give them another avenue to advertise their product, their, their store somehow. In the oh, same way, you don't. Want, oh, sorry, right. I think in the same way you don't want to obstruct that sight triangle, you also don't want to put things in a place that they're going to obstruct. You know, key vantage points of either the front door of the business or the signs. And in many cases, that's kind of a property by property discussion. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to be very sensitive, and we have talked to, I guess, about every business owner on that strip, but we're going to have to be, because a bit, our, our goal is economic, to grow our businesses so they can employ more people and put more money into our county. So we don't want to do anything that would hurt them, because what we're doing Hopefully, it's for them. And we, I, I think it is personally, but we don't want to cause them any concern. I guess well, I'm, I'm wondering how many of them have expressed an interest in being involved in this process because I think the more that we get them involved with it, the more likely we're going to buy them. Well, they, all the strip 
<coughs> business owners have met with us in one meeting. And we've got out on foot and talked to the others about what we're doing and some of the other programs we've got going, like beautifying their businesses. So it's, I don't think it's going to be anything new to anybody, but we might get them all together at one time and say, we need to talk about this again, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And what I tried to do in this was with these conceptual um, renderings was show what that potential might be, but recognize, you know, when mm -hmm. reality hits on some things, you, you may have to make some adjustments mm -hmm. in there. So for example, this is the parking lot with the Village Shopping Center. So today, you know, front of the building, <coughs> parking area in this green strip right in adjacent to the road is where the sidewalk is located. There's mm -hmm. about three feet of a green brown space between that and just um, no curbing or anything to the parking stall. So to, I mean, this one where I showed the, the power poles and that first row of parking is really within public right of way. And so in looking at how to reconfigure this and keep, this is something that except for, you know, building the the green space around the sign keeps the parking configuration roughly the same, but it's very tight. It's really at the minimum you can get away with to keep that configuration and achieve a five foot buffer, a five foot sidewalk, and then a three foot mm -hmm. strip on the back of that, that if somebody is backing into this in their pickup truck, you know, it's not gonna hang over the sidewalk. And so the 18 foot parking lanes on either side are pretty well within the standards, the 18 foot driveway widths are not enough to accommodate two-way traffic. They'd have to, you know, paint arrows in the parking lot to make it one way. Not that everybody follows that or is it It's <laughs> pretty much like that now. If yeah. you go down through that property, you just about, well, you, you, we rarely pass anybody in those yeah. uh, lanes now. So the tight spot are the, the island. Mm -hmm. ones that it only leaves about 15 foot which is at the minimum mm -hmm. of that depth that you would want so mm -hmm. it would be the kind of thing you wouldn't want to so to keep the number of spaces under this configuration mm -hmm. that's where you get the conflict the, the other options are to put then parallel stalls mm -hmm. along this frontage that mm -hmm. would reduce the number of spots but maybe keep these more usable more people. Do, do you have dimensions, minimum dimensions for, for parallel, for straight in parking? Um, the widths of the aisles for two-way traffic? Yeah, I've got the, I've got the recommendations in a, in a document that are pretty easy to find. But that, the 18 the reason I'm asking, I've, I've gone online several times and I've seen different numbers. Depends where you go. I want to make sure I get a number. I try to take it from uh, Institute of Transportation Engineers, ITE. It's kind of the recognized group for that. Um, and, and you know, as, as you would move to implementation of something like this, it would be something to get um, either through the contract that the town has with uh, one of the municipal engineering firms that does a lot of work mm -hmm. to just kind of tap into their traffic person and, and look at this, because they're going to have somebody that can, um, you know, provide much more in-depth knowledge mm -hmm. to that and, and to some degree can to figure out how to do that. But I'm saying to keep the same number of stalls and do that, you've got some dimension constraints out there today. Do we have any idea how often that's full? I do not know. Around lunchtime. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's two restaurants there. Because people park there across the street. There's a Mexican restaurant as well. And they talked about, I think, when, when was it, okay, the lady's name was in the meetings, about okay. parallel parking on the, looks like an alleyway or a side street between them and the convenience store and the McDonald's property mm -hmm. of space to strike. And so I, I remember her comments in the one meeting were, if something like this enhanced their storefront tidge area but had a reduction in that, they felt there were some parallel spots that could be striped in mm -hmm. on the side for those busiest peak period times. It's used for parking now, lots of times. Mm -hmm. I think the emphasis in any type of discussion like that just needs to be on this public investment 
to improve these private properties. And, and it, it will be if, if implemented fully, if the funds can be found for the sidewalks, it will be a visually and as far as a user perspective, a huge improvement. So at the southern end of the corridor, this is in front of, let's see, is this the hotel? Building. So this is one of the spaces where the newer development has put in that green buffer space back to the right of way line. And so right now there's space to just move that sidewalk, you know, back to five feet and get the buffer and you're not going to encroach on any property parking stalls. Those are the easy ones and the type of places to approach them if you have the money for the landscaping of do you want that landscaping um, enhanced a bit. There's already, you know, a handful of trees in that space and in the spot in front of the Ingalls and in front of the bank. So most of the improvements in the south of the main intersection are enhancement uh, to what's already there. As you work your way north, you know, the intersection, the highway, um, as you get over into this area with the, the large field, that's where we start to get more of a slope. Um, that even though there's public right of way there to fully put in a five foot detached sidewalk and get the maximum, you'd have to do a lot of fill dirt in there, which is still possible. Um, but some of the other options may be enhance it today once the property develops. They're going to probably be raising it and reconfiguring um, a lot of the land in there anyway, and that's when the town could require kind of that optimal. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if this, you have one of these maps here. Do you have a map that shows from Ingalls further down, further south, I guess, along the bypass? So this is kind of starting at the Ingalls <coughs> and then working south. This, this the uh, of the bay. Yeah, a little bit farther probably. from there and getting down to the uh, intersection. Main Street intersection. Okay. So that's micro tell there, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, up here. <coughs> I'll go back to the previous one if you would, please. Yep. So just give me a second to figure out where I am. So the South Main intersection, right here, Ford, uh, Street. Ford Street. Traffic light right there. And Brenda, which was this the area you were talking about for the sign that you wanted me to take a look at? Is, is that, that uh, mm -hmm. East Main Street up there? That's Main. East Main, yeah. Well, we have a north and south main and an east main, which it, east main is down here in front of Lee. Down to five points. That runs down to five points. That's what that is. You know where yeah. that is? Yes, that one. Yes, that right. Okay, yeah. And it was right in there, but I've not been able to get up with TJ today, so okay. he's going to have to point that out to me. Okay. Exactly where he was <coughs> talking about. And then I'll mark it on a map and send, email it okay. to you, so you can see. It's hard to talk about something if, but just sure. even verbal. Okay. That's what I want to make sure from the emails we exchanged. To yes, make sure. I, know I had the vicinity have, right, but wasn't sure if it was one of these pockets on there or something right. else. That was. I understand. The, the reason I was asking about it is if I can go up there on that map where you've got your tree, your three, your three trees or whatever up there. Right about where that is, that's old railroad right away. Okay. And that's owned by, I think, either the town or the county, the county, I guess. And the county is considering putting in the new visitor center at that location. So in this property? Uh -huh. Right in there, yeah. And that's going to make that area extremely congested, I think, from traffic point of view. But that's what we're looking at right now. Again, that was an area with open green space with a pretty generous right of way mm -hmm. width. So, um, you know, again, obviously, if they were going to put center there and, and other ideas for kiosks and other things, that might need to be considered. Yeah, I just wanted you to be aware there was some, discuss okay. some discussion on that. So, if someone says something to you later, we have an idea where, where, where they're talking about. Yep. So here with the, the microtel and the, the bank, again, a lot of open space to do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but mainly landscape enhancement and, and ultimately putting those sidewalks um, with a better buffer to go there. We talked about that one. Same thing in front of the Ingalls enhancement. This is a place where there's still two old driveway cuts from likely before when the Ingalls was developed. 
of what that property <coughs> was when they built the bypass and put in the original sidewalks. And so one of the things would be, especially where those driveway cuts are not being used, when you rebuild the sidewalks to make those vertical curve um, and close them off. As they are today, you know, um, a person in a wheelchair is on a sidewalk that's not in a driveway but still having to cross it as if, as if it's um, a driveway. Uh, for, the, for the bench pads, you know, there, there's two things to follow really with those. You want to try to get them within, um, you know, 150 feet or so of a nearby intersection. Um, for visibility and just, you know, that's where people, if they are going to take a rest and if they don't feel comfortable with them, you know, being at an intersection, they're very visible, um, you know, they can be seen. So it also has <coughs> a sort of functional and aesthetic okay. um, in terms of that placement. Uh, talked a little bit about the intersection. Again, um, green space here, that's good. Some constraints there with the slopes. Um, the illustration for the little pocket area at the intersection for the kiosk, uh, when I came back out and remeasured it, you know, there's, there's some space here where you could put the pad back of sidewalk, do a receptacle and a bench, possibly a paved area where you have, we're talking about an information kiosk for access from here and the sidewalks. Um, anything else, if you felt like linking it with a small pathway between those, there's probably some space to do that. I had a hard time getting a good scale. Where is, where is that area? So this is the uh, 143 intersection. Okay. And it's the hardware store. Okay, got it. Pharmacy. Okay. That's there. Would that, would that require expanding the existing the green patch there significantly, wouldn't it? Um, no, I tried to put this in the same footprint of that. I think you've got some options there. It just depends on what ultimately you, you want to have there. There's, there's space. And it's within public right of way for the most part. Um, there's a little section, um, an oddly oh. configured area that is. Big is the cross? I said 30, 30 by 50. I'm trying to remember. Exactly. I want to say that's roughly. And the sidewalk and <coughs> the bottom there take up about 15 feet. Say that again? The sidewalk and the Buffer. This would be a, a, most likely like a three foot buffer with a okay. five foot sidewalk. And depending on how far this came in and what that size was, you know, they could, they could start to butt up with one another. I wonder if it would be too cluttered to put a fountain in there. Tim just mentioned that. And we've had more than one person to request we do a fountain somewhere in town. Yeah, I put in there just kind of public art or other feature as an option oh, did you? in there. Oh, so yeah, yeah I just so. thought that there's, yeah, so I think you have several options in well, there to look like, depending on what you get money for and, right. and what you ultimately want to make of the space. What about that spot that's, if you were coming this way on 140 here, it's right in front of Car Drive or whatever drugstore? Is that public land or is that theirs? That's part of our right away. The DOT right away. Sure that's, is. <coughs> but that's 143 and 129. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so right that, here. That corner there is yeah. very yeah. difficult for large vehicles to make a turn. In fact, I can't even turn there. The mine, the mine at one of them. Oh, it's too tight. You can't do it. Uh, if there's, somebody, if there's nobody in the turn, turn lane, you can make that turn, but otherwise you can't. The left? Uh, right turn. Right turn off Right turn from 143. Oh, this one. <laughs> yeah, right there. I didn't see in the DOT's plans, I know with the resurfacing project, it looked like they were moving, this is called the stop bar, the big white line where they want, you know, hopefully the cars stop I can't back. I mean, they, they've got an oddly, I mean, it's going to be a very odd angle of crosswalk that they're putting in there, and I can't remember what they were doing to cut that island that's in there. Back. I didn't see anything that looked like they were shaving off. Um, <coughs> that was a critical point right there. Just about every truck that makes a turn, uh, they, they go wall, up on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good idea for pedestrians here. Yeah, not to put the bench right there. That's why we have these discussions. <laughs> um, so again, you know, an open field here, but uh, a pretty decent slope almost immediately off the road coming there. So again, through something, a development of that property, you'd think it would be optimal if it was short term. Um, if it was upgrading the sidewalk, 
maybe, or you, there's ideas that it's going to be developed in the next eight to ten years as something might be best just to wait. That's where the cornfield was, I believe. Yeah. 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 Because we're still coming coming off the road into that field. Yeah. So the right of way space is there, but to get in a five foot buffer and a five foot <coughs> sidewalk, you have to put a lot of fill in there. About that one. So, um, this area, talking about the crosswalk from the sign uh, going across there, I think it's a decent location. It ends up being right on the property line of these buildings, and it's one of the areas where you have a very expansive driveway cut. I it might be closed up briefly. And so, I think it's a good spot to put a crosswalk from a a distance from the signalized intersections from a visibility standpoint. You have a destination on one side and the other. It's really about getting the agreement in relation to how you treat, you know, the, the 15 feet or you, so either side of the um, of the crosswalk um, for driveways. They will still have access, and it's kind of wide open now, and you can tell there's a lot of. Uh, things that are in that space. So it doesn't look like it's actively being used, but that could become a consideration. Um, and, you know, you could put small, median islands on either side, but the length of them would be very restricted by to not conflict with turning movements into the businesses. I think I've got... So these are ones that are on US-19 in Maggie Valley. Um, for their crosswalks, so it's a five-lane road, but a, a very short um, buffer space and planting median with the crosswalk going through the middle. So something like that is what um, you could do there. But again, I think it's going to take uh, more consideration and discussion with the property owners. The reimagining Robbinsville, you know, talked about ultimately. Oh, we'd love to see the the median down the whole stretch. There's some things that are going to make that more difficult. And one is business access that always becomes an issue. But two, given that it's only a three-lane road, um, emergency services mm -hmm. and having a full-length median. Uh, they want 19 feet of clearance space, or they want to have that if this median was there and a car is broken down right there and they need to get around it, they only have to go around it for a short uh, bit. So I think this type of application um, if you found other spaces in the future to do it, would, would be more appropriate than thinking of a full-length landscape meeting <coughs> along the route. For the crosswalk, you wouldn't put a control of the intersection there, probably, but would you put like a flashing light of some kind? You or? could do the flashing light. The, the visibility is enough, is and I think the speeds are slow enough. I, I don't know that you would run into many conflicts for that. Um, you know, the flashing beacon lights can, can run on <coughs> the order of, you know, 75 what to 100,000. It's 35. <coughs> you, there, there are other things, yeah, there's, um, people are putting <coughs> LED flashers around pedestrian crossing signs, and so you can hit the button and the sign will flash. Those are a lot more, those are much more inexpensive than um, a full signal, but I would not put like a light turns red, cars have to stop um, in that location. The hopes are that by a treatment like this, it's pretty visible from the signage. These are what are called high visibility crosswalks, and rather than just two lines going across the street. And the median, you know, in, in most cases tells the motorists this is a place to expect pedestrians. Like I said, it's a pretty straight area, it's pretty visible, so I wouldn't expect media conflicts out there. If you had the, a land use that came in that changed that and saw more, then you know you might want to look at that. Um, <coughs> so this is kind of that, that concept in front of the sign. Um, short what's called a carriage walk connecting the sidewalk to the street and then the high visibility crosswalk going out. Um, getting into the kind of the northern third of the corridor, much more open space, but areas that have the slopes going off of both sides of the road. So put a lot of landscaping here, as you guys talked about, to screen the land use that was back um, in here with the uh, with the scrapyard and the, and the vehicles mm -hmm. there, and that more or less be replace the sidewalk where it is and put landscaping down that that back slope that runs off the road. Um, and really the 
same thing as you work your way up toward the car wash and the intersection. And then up here, the discussions have been around. This is a low-lying area. There's stormwater runoff that goes into there. It's also a gateway location. And in, in the reimagining Robbinsville, the, some conceptual um, stormwater management demonstration project that also had some, you know, a sign and, and some other uh, features there with a bench location uh, right near the near the intersection. Uh, lots of public right of way in that area. I tried to follow that line as best as I could tell it was here, so it seems like you've got some space to do some things. Is that a building in the corner there? Or is that what I'm right here? Yeah. It's a billboard? Uh -huh. um, and then just from the dimensions standpoint and the basics, what I tried to follow, I showed you this one earlier with what um, a bench pad would be, 8 to 10 feet, depending on the bench and receptacle size. You want to go at least a 3-foot um, pad back. If you did a, the pad on the back side of a sidewalk and you thought it might be a place where you'd eventually replace the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you know, make it the 5 feet so mm -hmm. it's there. Um, but if you've got to pull out a 3-foot by 8-foot pad 10 years down the road, that's not a big um, loss in terms of investment. About the medians, uh, been in contact with the state um, when they showed us the design plans for the resurfacing project last fall. Um, DOT, not not the local folks. It, it's been a state level thing. Their curb ramp design standards, their wheelchair ramps, have never been compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act um, since the 1990s. Last year, they put new drawings into effect that are in compliance. But there are projects like this one that were designed before that that do not show it. And so um, this section may change after our conversation because one of the new drawings they have will fit in the same footprint and meet um, the ADA accessibility requirements. My biggest fear there was, one, it's a civil rights law. We don't want to be in violation of that. But two, it, it falls upon the town to take maintenance responsibility of the pedestrian facilities once they're done. And I didn't want the town to take on responsibility of a facility that was not in compliance um, with the law. So we're going to have that conversation with the DOT folks. Again, it's not, uh, it's not Wes and Joel or any of them. It, it's stuff that's not been addressed at the state level. They're just getting the drawings that DOT puts together. So I, I've got some language in there about that just to kind of protect the group and the town, um, but if they can substitute that new standard drawing into new, you should be um, in pretty good shape for that. And so I put some pictures in there of just what some of the typical ones look like versus what a compliant ramp resembles. If you've got questions on the technical nuances of that, I'd be happy to answer them. But it was more as a wanted to document it here so you had a, something to stand on mm -hmm. if need be. In those discussions, and if the discussions turn out well, I'll just remove these pages. <laughs> Is there a break of price difference? Um, so, for this, no, it should not be because this is a type of ramp that the slopes occur here and the flat pad is there, and that still fits into the same typical. This is a little bit different than what they'll build out there, but it's really just how you configure the pavement and <coughs> that corner. It is where your slopes are and where your landing is. Um, to do something like this with the ramp and the pad in the back, that would be um, a higher cost. So that's why I'm, this one is in their new drawing, so I'm hoping they accommodate that. Um, other things. This is just in there for your consideration long term. If the town goes through with some of the recommendations of reimagining Robbinsville and looks at you know, subdivision design standards and all the other things that go along with policies, gateway signage and sculptures, street lights. There's these new street lights. When, when highway agencies install them, they put in highway grade street lighting. It's meant to provide visibility for cars and for pedestrians crossing the street, but not provide lighting where the pedestrians are walking. And I've seen some new, these are even solar ones that have a highway scale lamp coming off on the roadside, but on the post a shorter one that is over the sidewalk. So in a full streetscape redevelopment, you know, this would be a nice piece to put in there and uh, you know everybody's glomming onto grants with solar lights and everything else mm -hmm. so you can you know at least claim to be environmentally uh, 
friend for that. I did put some language in here about the commercial signage. There's, you know, um, dealing with the temporary stuff is always hard. It's an enforcement issue. They should not obstruct that site triangle mm -hmm. that we talked about. I know there's a couple on there that kind of do sit in that visibility mm -hmm. triangle. <coughs> um, but, you know, in the future ordinances that for the full corridor would develop a, a sign standard, it looks like the town already has a sign height standard. I can tell some of the older businesses have signs that are much higher than some of the newer ones, so it looks like they're enforcing that. Um, maintenance plan, you know, just be cautious. You're putting this stuff in there, somebody needs to go out and, you know, be trimming trees and, and pruning things. and. Uh, there's a great story from a, a, the D.C. suburbs that the transit agency in the town thought it would be great to go out and put all these trash receptacles at bus stops, and they forgot to go ask their waste management people about picking it up. So they ended up with full trash cans with everyone, that's not our responsibility. Um, you know, so things like that. The only thing worse than not having a trash receptacle out there is having one that's overflowing. And then maintaining crepe myrtles. I found a great brochure from the town of Hillsborough, North Carolina. I guess they had had some issue of, of property owners and businesses topping uh, the crepe myrtles. So I put pretty much verbatim their language in here about that. I thought it was um, pretty helpful and something that, again, if you're talking to businesses, um, you can replicate uh, some of that. <coughs> so all of this section goes into there. Funding potential. Um, DOT has an annual program of uh, monies. Uh, Ruben couldn't remember if it was 500,000 a year or 500,000 every two years. He just knows it's been cut in half um, in the past few years. But they do have money that, you know, if they're in the pipeline a year or two ahead of time for sidewalk replacement and things, you know, chances are you can go out and get that. I've probably seen Ruben's presentation where Division 14 they probably got 15 or 20 of these either done or in the pipeline, so there's a good chance you can tap into that um, once <coughs> this is done. Economic development grants, you know, you're all plugged into um, those types of groups and what's there. Foundation grants, the health field and other things coming on board, maybe there's possibilities there. Uh, Travel and Tourism Authority, um, they're, you know, a lot of them are doing signage and streetscape enhancements, and that's usually within uh, their legislation of authority that, that they can possibly be a partner. I didn't want to over-prescribe that because you know the local players a lot better. Just wanted to put a paragraph in there addressing what um, some of the options are. So next steps, um, you know, utilize existing grants for short-term improvements. That's what you're planning to do. Um, encroachment permits for installation. You know, secure grants for more trees. Maybe you want more variety than crepe myrtles. So, you know, some of these locations might be better with um, um, some other ones have the policy discussions as the town moves through any planning or ordinances um, with other implementation features of reimagined Rosenfield. And then the coordination from DOT um, is always there. They're going to want to know who's going to maintain the trees, who's going to empty the trash, and do those kind of things. And so that's pretty much the document. Um, mm -hmm. I got a couple of things here from the discussion that I want to go back in and kind of well, let me hands. say something yeah. right now, and maybe Lisa could address <coughs> this in her blog. At several meetings, I've requested, if anyone knows, I think it'd be wonderful, and Lisa's blog really addresses community participation, which the great organization does too, but it would be an ideal time for someone interested in gardening to help with our streetscape plan to help with the maintenance as a volunteer group. We used to have some people that did that. I was going to suggest, uh, I chair the Natural Resources Recreation and Water Quality Committee. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a project that our, our group might be willing to help with. Oh, that'd be wonderful if they so would. I, I'll, I'll need to present that to the group and see if we can round if up If you would, Dave, I'd appreciate that so much. You're right, I hadn't thought of that. I was uh, <clears throat> talking to uh, Ted Norcross with the Lions Club uh, the other day, and they have some dogwood trees that are available right now. They would like to get planted sometime in March. Okay. So those are available for a streetscape project and for some at uh, Robbinsville High School and State Court Valley Center. 
So those, you know, you may want to do a contact. I have, I thought I emailed him. Would you email him and copy me so he and I can get together like that? I've left him a phone message. And <coughs> Probably Nancy would be the person to work with on the email. Okay. And, and she should be at the great meeting tonight. Okay, so I'll find her. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions about this plan before we move on to the next? Um, I just have a, it's not necessarily a question, but um, the health department was awarded a, a workshop that talks all about this planning and about smart growth and about how it can be a great economic developer and the health aspects of it. And if you guys are interested in getting more community input and more people on board, especially like these business owners that might be on the fence, this would be a great workshop for everyone to attend. And I was going to bring flyers to the great meeting this afternoon, which I still will, but I have all the information and we have some tentative dates in mind. So I'm going to send these plans to the workshop presenters so they have a better idea of what's going on here in Graham County and they can tailor these workshop to specifically what our community is doing. Would that be brought in the <coughs> board? In this particular plan, the project is funded by uh, next steps through Region A ARC grant funding and we were fortunate enough to receive one of the grants and extremely fortunate enough that uh, Don's group was awarded the, uh, the contract to do this study and Melissa this is kind of what the one that <coughs> yours will fit into. Okay, okay, perfect. So we'll be working in tandem with your planning and I know that you've been copying Don and, and Sarah some of the emails that's been going back and forth. But uh, this is a really, really exciting project, I think, because what it's going to do is to enable a plan to be developed that will connect different points and parts of Robbinsville, including the Greenway system, which we're all excited about with uh, the Stanley Furniture uh, Park being developed here real soon. We hope that things work out there. And then the other end of the Greenway being at the high school, the school system has purchased that land right down below it. So we've got the two ends of the Greenway system. Now we just got, need to get them connected. And don't forget your creeks. Oh, the creeks. So oh, yeah, the Greenways wonderful. run by the three creeks that flow into and through Robbinsville, Sweetwater, Tallulah, and Long Creek. <coughs> so, uh, We'll be talking a little bit about that at the great meeting later on, and we'll have some handouts that will be available for those folks. But, Don, we're really excited about uh, especially the uh, HIA, what, health? Health Impact Assessment. Health Impact Assessment, and how we can <laughs> use that to seek funding from some of our health groups and agencies to make this greenway a reality. I know they're out there. We just got to find them. So this will really lend, uh, lend uh, support to that whole idea. So again, I apologize for having to skip out. I really wanted to stay here and listen to the discussion because it's kind of a, a project that I loved. But anyway, there'll be plenty. There'll be plenty more meetings that uh, that we'll be involved in, and I look forward to seeing all of you at the great meeting. Remember, it starts at five. The meeting itself, there's a social gathering at four, so you're all invited to come and, and enjoy. Okay? If you don't know where the elementary auditorium is, it's just right down Main Street right there on the left. Okay? So, Don, Sarah. thanks for being here. You and Sarah, appreciate yes. your help. No, I'm, I'm thrilled to be working on, on this uh, particular project. I, when Sarah and I were riding over here, it was talking about a lot of the work I've done in the pedestrian and bicyclist realm has been a lot of you know small town rural areas and um, and, and what I do in consulting that's um, you know I could come in and talk about all the stuff in Asheville or Charlotte or something but that doesn't resonate here that much I mean you want to have greenways and things but the scale the money availability and other factors are just so much different and so um, you know part of what Rick wanted with this was an implementation plan you know, we're not in here to do a lot of, of warm and fuzzies, even though that's part of it, but what is the tangible set of implementation actions that the partners that you have can take to <coughs> get a greenway and to build sidewalks on some streets? And a key part that I put in there 
to look at was what I call alternative pedestrian facilities. Um, to put in curb and gutter and sidewalk when you don't have a storm drain system can cost $1 million a month. If you can find an application that doesn't require you to install a stormwater system, you can reduce that cost to $100,000 a mile. So for places like Ford Street that are flat, have drainage issues, and probably about, what, two-thirds of a mile long, mm -hmm. running the full length, instead of a $600,000 project, which would be ultimate out there, how can we find a different solution that reduces that cost, puts a pedestrian facility that is functional you know, on a quarter. So those are the things we want to identify for you as options to move forward with and pursue money, recognizing that putting a full-blown sidewalk on every street <coughs> is just not practical and possible. So what are the priorities? Where do we want people to be able to get to? Um, and then how can we engage partners in that? Uh, beyond projects that are obviously the most visible thing, um, in pedestrian planning there's a, a phrase called you know, planning for the five E's. And so engineering and projects is one of them. But education, encouragement, enforcement, and evaluation are the others. Now we won't go as, into as much depth on all of those, but education and encouragement are critical. We need our visitors, our citizens, our kids to know how to properly walk on the sidewalk, properly cross the street. We want to have encouragement um, initiatives. We want to um, I work in the bicycle realm a lot, and um, like in Haywood County, they want to promote more bicycle tourism, but they know if people in the restaurants and people at the convenience stores, people come in, oh, we want to bike around Haywood County, and their first response is, oh, you'll get yourself killed. We don't want to put that first face forward. So we don't want, if somebody is down at the microtail and wants to walk, you know, to the Junaluska Memorial, we don't want the response from the clerk to be, why would you walk there? You'll get yourself killed. Mm -hmm. No. We want it to be, hey, yes, there's a good spot to walk. It may not be most direct, but if you go here, here, and here, mm -hmm. that can get you there. And so that's that encouragement piece. Um, but as you get into the ease outside of engineering, it's places like the schools and the health department that can help you do those kind of things. Um, enforcement, um, enforcement includes signage. Um, and enforcement includes what we all understand enforcement to mean, is, is how is that you know, enforced from a law enforcement standpoint. You're going to have jaywalking. That's going to happen. That's not the biggest concern. Um, you know, we should have. I don't expect the enforcement end um, for Robbinsville to be as in depth as it would be for other places. And then evaluation. Um, grants are getting more competitive. People want to know more. It's not just good enough to say we we want this. It's nice. Um, so how can we go out and and through this group and others? Hey, once we build the green layer, the first segment, let's go out and count the people that are using it so we know. And so we know over time that over five years, we've increased from 20 users on a Saturday morning to 150 users on a Saturday morning. Or there's 50 people out walking the track at the high school today. We linked the greenway to downtown and it tripled. Those are the type of evaluation things in the future You know, we want to prepare you for. Um, so the process in and of itself, the Reimagining Robbinsville did a map of the Greenway system and the pedestrian system, so we're not going to go in and like evaluate every street to say something's there, something's not. We're here to give solutions from that. The Health Impact Assessment Workshop we're planning to do on Tuesday, April 23rd from 1 to 5 p.m. We're still looking for a, a location, a room that's slightly bigger than this but with enough wall space. So I will send an announcement out of that very um, shortly the details, but the purpose of today's meeting was we could spend two or three hours do a roundtable discussion of visions, goals, and objectives, but given the time constraints, given what I know that all of you have is knowledge of the place, let's just get to the meat of it. And so what I put in front of you is a worksheet that I want you to take for the next 10 to 15 minutes and work through those questions and think about them. Think about what your answers are because that's this is going to help us look at things in more detail. It's going to help us prioritize um, what we look at and what we do with this plan. We're going to do the same handout to the folks that attend the meeting tonight. We're not going to have a discussion about it, but ask them to fill it out um, and get it back to us. And so I'll just read through real quick um, what the purpose is. And what I want you to do is after you get them done, I want you to pair up with the person next to you. If you're related to them in some fashion, I want you to change seats. <laughs> Um, and talk to each other about them. 
and get an understanding and see if that spurs any additional ideas. So number one, just vision for walking in Robbinsville. What is your vision of what a walkable Robbinsville look like? Describe to us what features a walkable community should include. And say, don't just think about a sidewalk and groomway. What are the other things that will ultimately support walkability? Moving into number two, implementing that vision you just thought about. Uh, how do you get around, or would you like to get around to in Robbinsville on foot? What are the top three projects? So I do want something very specific here. You would like to see built in Robbinsville. This can be a greenway from point A to point B, a sidewalk from point A to point B, a crosswalk at this location. Anything um, is open. Back side of the sheet, active people, active places. What are the places right now where people in Robbinsville are active? I think I know the answer to a couple of these, but think about what those are. And how do you best access those places on foot? Can you? Um, and what are the barriers to getting there? These can be real or perceived barriers. Obviously, if there's a sidewalk that's not there and you can't get there, that's an obvious physical barrier. But is it a road that you just feel you wouldn't want to walk across every day? It may not be a barrier. You can walk across it, but you just feel like you can't do it or you wouldn't take a child out there to do it. Um, number four, somewhat related, where do you think Robbinsville and Graham County residents as well as visitors would be more physically active if they could reach a certain destination on foot? So not about where they're being active today, but what are the other destinations we have that if we connected them, um, more people would be able to get there? And then finally, other ideas, anything else you have um, in relation to walking in Robbinsville? How can we promote economic development, healthier living? overall quality of life. What does that mean to you and who are some of the partners? So just take some time and write those down. Um, I do want to take these at the end so I can compile them together so um, you don't have to put your name or anything on them. It can be anonymous um, and like I said I left a spot there if you want to sketch something for an idea or location uh, feel free to do that. I've done it on other projects and have actually found some things that you know we never even thought of. So it can be useful. Let's start going around uh, to each group and just give me a little bit about what you talked about and, and what your top priority ended up being. Uh, we, we talked really uh, how the need is for both uh, visitors and, and residents and we need to keep both those groups in mind. Um, we, we agreed that whatever we do, it should be attractive with natural features, uh, using natural features like water, uh, trees, native plants. We think it should be more than just a um, walking trail. Uh, we'd like to see bikes be able to ride on it. And I think one of the biggest projects that we saw would be a greenway from the high school system uh, down to the, I can't remember which creek is that, Long Creek. Long Creek. Long Creek goes by the library, goes by the swimming pool, goes all the way out to the recreation. So it could be a, 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 a kind of a natural first trail to put in. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many features along that trail. So how would you uh, getting at the visitors angle for them, you know, how how do we represent their needs? How do we I mean that we can't get visitors to come to the committee meetings and, right. and other workshops or asking a visitor to come to a meeting in town about this. What, is there somebody we can ask, somebody that would know, things from your perspective to consider that? Travel and tourism has, uh, the, the Natural Resources Recreation Committee has put together a brochure of all the things that's available in Grand County, uh, natural kind of things, the Appalachian Trail, Cherahila, all those places, and have given it to travel and tourism. So they, they have that information. The bigger, I think, secret is going to be uh, signage. We talked about that, how there's no signage that directs people, visitors, to where, where to go. Uh, there's one sign to Joyce Kilmer in Robbinsville. I think there? it's out on Massey Branch too. Which is way it. out there, and that's one. Yeah, that's a that's a really neat place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, same with the Appalachian Trail. There's no signage from town that says this way to the Appalachian Trail or this way to the Appalachian Trail. Um, Terry Hill Skyway again. There's only one sign I think. Uh, there's just not any good signage that directs our visitors to the sites. Whatever mode they're using. Yeah. Okay. Do y'all know of anywhere we could get funding for signage? I know DOT signs some of our roadways, but do... Most of the wayfinding signage that, you know, if you've seen in Franklin, you know, to downtown, and or if you've seen the stuff in Asheville, Buckingham County, those have all been funded through the tourism. 
development authorities with tourism. And traveling tourism space. does have money. I mean, they do have some funds. And it's something we probably are approaching. Them. Okay. And what I've seen in the overall wayfinding scheme is you would have things for these destinations that are outside of town that you know right. aren't as walkable. Those are larger scale highway signs, but you follow a similar design theme in town of a smaller sign that if somebody is standing on the corner, you know, uh, uh, this way to the high school walking trail, this way to right. um, downtown, but you can fit all of that into the same design scheme. It's just the size that we changes. We're thinking that kiosk, that, you, that little mm -hmm. item, that, that would be a good place to have that kind of information. This yeah. connectivity plan would be a great first step towards them doing a a wayfinding sign system for the town. Oh, that's right. Because uh, our consultant's from Chapel Hill, and this is a quote, the only signage in Robbinsville is pointing the way out. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's uh, true. And it, and it is. I mean, we've got so many wonderful resources mm -hmm. here, and then directing everybody out of town. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Ms. Group? Do you have another priority beyond the, the Greenway? I think that one? was the biggest, although, is that going to say what you had said earlier? <laughs> I thought which one? <laughs> <laughs> I thought a bunch of stuff. Well, you know, uh, making, making sure safety, you know, there is, uh, I think, at our high school, from the entrance at the, uh, the red light there, going into the high school, there's no sidewalks on either side. And so kids, there's a lot of people that walk in and out, kids that run, we have runners, we have all kinds of stuff there. And I think you know, because we have the park that, you know, the walkway that goes around here, that people might be more inclined to walk on into town and make a bigger loop out of it if there was a safe way to get there. But, uh, you know, when school's letting out or different things, I mean, it's really chaotic there, so nobody's going to get out and do anything. So I think, you know, just making sure that everything's safe for people. Celery, I believe we're going to get sidewalks over there through that safe so route to, to school. Yeah, Great. to school. That's and uh, so that was a high priority. Yeah, that, I, I can see that. I mean, there's, yes. been, there's been a kid hit there before, so. Oh, I, really? Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Your group? Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we both kind of agree in general that sidewalks you know, a way to get from point A to point B. Uh, we talked about the fact that, you know, now trying to get almost anywhere around town, you're almost taking your life in your own hands, or at least you feel that way, you know. Uh, we agreed to that. Um, having trees and plantings and things like that to make it look kind of like they alluded to is a, a high priority. We also said, we said the same thing about signage. You've got to have a way to figure out, how, not just outside of town, but in town, how do you get to restaurants, courthouse, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Um, the one thing that, that I had thought would, would be a nice way to do too, I think a lot of people that come here come here from cities to get out of the city. So I think sometimes we focus a little bit on the business and forget about 50 yards behind that business is a really cool stream or make nature trails up into the woods or whatever. Um, and I think that that would be a, uh, from a tourism standpoint, something to, that you could but If you could put the businesses <coughs> on the stream, as much as I hate to see that in some ways, I think it would be a, a, a draw. Of course. Yeah, even just like a little nature trail, half you know, half a mile back into the woods or whatever. It's like uh, that bead shop, you go, you know, yeah. go down it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Okay, Brenda. Let's see. Yes, art. I love art out, and I prefer art that's made, been made from junk out in the community because we're recycling like mufflers. I'm going to draw you a picture of a dog with a muffler made out of a muffler <laughs> <laughs> and a vegetable can. We can make bike racks out of yes. We can make bike racks out of mufflers. If I could weld, I would make this. <laughs> We need to muffle most of the dogs anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Um, and let's see. Places to see it. All the common things we've talked about. And uh, biking paths that Dave was talking to about. Oh, and trees. Trees have to cool our environment. It's so, even though we're in a cooler part of the world. It's really hot in the middle of July and August here. Mm -hmm. 
to get out and walk downtown. And the trees would cool, make it so much nicer. It's on a grander scale, obviously, but the city of Milwaukee did a study about the value of their street trees between the streets and the sidewalks and found estimated a $16 million annual energy savings yes. from what it created. Right. And plus there's an interesting piece, and I don't know, I understand why on the highway side of, of DOT they don't do it, but trees over local streets extend the life of the pavement. Oh, I, I, um, I know that. And because uh, it doesn't just have smart. as abrupt heating and cooling <coughs> cycles because of the shades. So there's, yeah, lots of that. Milwaukee's got a lot of trees, too. Lots of them. Yeah. Well, they had one where their contractors did something wrong, cut down a tree in front of some, a tree fell in front of somebody's house because they had done something wrong, mm -hmm. and the lawsuit basically said that that tree contributed $40,000 worth of value to the house. That's what they had to compensate. So, yeah, pretty significant. Mm -hmm. uh, big tree. Your group, Melissa? Mm -hmm. You wanna go ahead? Um, we spoke a lot about different ideas, but I guess our main priority was the fact that we want to make sure that all sidewalks and signage is, signage is um, ensures that the things that are put up are safe for children so we can make sure we promote children to be able to walk on these paths. So if they wanted to walk to school or bike to school, parents are okay with that. So that was our main priority. Any other and also interesting for children because, you know, my kids don't necessarily like, you know, they don't mind going on the high school, but, you know, there's nothing that really holds their interest until they get to the fitness area, you know, and then they can climb on things. So kind of what Brenda was saying with artworks, I kind of envision things that the kids can climb all over also, you know, so there's some more interest in that. And, and also getting down to the rivers. Getting down to the rivers was a big thing. Another thing <coughs> I just thought of, T.J. Holland tells me that, uh, when we're able to get uh, the new rec area that Andy Cable's working on out at Stanley, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we want to do a native plant educational trail mm -hmm. out by Lone Creek Stream out yeah. through there. Oh, and that's great. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, isn't that nice? Oh. Yeah, something that's interactive like yeah. that with the people. And TJ mm -hmm. can get the plants, get the money to get them planted and identified and that's everything. Nice. Melissa had a great idea, too. I liked your idea on the uh, mileage markers. Oh, um, also with pedestrian um, sidewalks, if we could have signs that says um, this loop is one mile or three miles, so if you wanted to run or walk, you could actually track your mileage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know you got here late. Feel free to join in the discussion at, at any time. I think let everyone go through. And <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, they have one. Um, um, okay. Feel free to... We're going to hand this out at the great meeting tonight, and you can turn it into Rick at, at some point if you don't finish it in the discussion here. Well, one big problem we have is, is crosswalks here. I mean, we have some sidewalks, and they're in bad shape, but then you take your life in your hands trying to fix <laughs> But that's a, that, that's a big, big issue. But the, the greenway is they need to have short distances, and places to rest, because not everybody is, is 18 years old and fit, and the 18 year old fit one's only using the Greenway probably anyway. I mean, the population is older, we're older. Um, the idea is if you want people to use it for health purposes, chances are they're not that healthy anyway, or they don't have a current health, health outlet, exercise outlet, so you need to have perfect places for them to walk a while and stop and rest. And also that stop and rest, that tranquility, me is, is a big part of a, a green man, especially if you can just right next to the stream. Um, and the wildflowers or local native plants, and other people they can enjoy them. Little signs showing what the plants are or whatever. Uh, that's so what we don't have here. So we talked about some of the special needs and considerations for kids outside of what you're talking about place rest. Any other things you can think of considerations for older adults? I think that's they a really need. valid point because the retirement community is huge in this area and a lot of our folks that come in during the summertime are uh, from other states and they just spend the summer here with us and then head back uh, in the winter. So there's a lot of, a lot of the uh, uh, older folks, me included, uh, that um, could benefit from stuff that's not quite so strenuous. <coughs> and also, you know, couples with baby strollers and stuff like this, it's the, the surface needs to be something that, mm -hmm. that's doesn't it there need to be a, a, a hard paved surface, but if it's gravel, or what it needs to be small gravel, something you can push a 
push a, a stroller along and maybe use a bike on them. Any, any other big items? Well, of course, you've got to tie in these activities like you had at the high school. Every so often you have these exercise, exercise stations in different places around. Yeah, one of the things we'll have in, in talking about what we'll do with next steps, <coughs> uh, my colleague Chris, who I work with on a lot of projects, we've developed a method we call an activity connection plan. That is really how we form the foundation of looking at you know pedestrian network. It's not about where there are or are not sidewalks on streets, but rather can you get from one point of activity to others. And I hear a lot of that in the themes that you're talking about. This idea of we have a small footprint here, but how can we get people to nature quickly mm -hmm. on foot? Whether nature trails or other hiking trails. When we did the regional trails plan, it talked about getting something from the town out to the uh, the trails and community center by the lake. Right. Um, that was out there, and, and so I'm hearing the high school as a destination for physical activity, the new rec center, and mm -hmm. then that planned up, up by Stanley, mm -hmm. and then the recreational area. So that kind of. Yeah, swimming pools also. Right, swimming pools. Mm -hmm. Because it's a park, a little park play area, and a, a tennis courts, basketball. Where is that? That's, uh, it's kind of hard to find. It's near Tri County Community Park. Oh, okay. Right there, right there at the corner. Of There's a lot of business okay. mainly in the summertime because of course. So that would be adjacent if the greenway was along. Yeah, it's right along that yeah. same tree. Any thoughts from the discussion from those of you that came in? I have a, an addition to some of this. Is um, there's a way also to stabilize uh, a gravel trail with Montmorillite clay. I don't know if there's a local source, but it's the type of thing that you find in kitty litter. Mm -hmm. And when you put it over the uh, gravel, it's still moisture permeable, but it will hold the gravel without mm -hmm. being concrete. Mm -hmm. That sounds nice. And it, so it would help to stabilize the trail and then there's a way to do a planting over the top of it if you care to that keeps it from washing off and there's different native plants that you can use that would do a, a low spreading and stay six inches or less across it so that it would actually become a green path <coughs> which is different from a gravel trail but it's you know we're different here <laughs> and we do native plants, so that's another possibility. Where have you seen that? It sounds like you've seen a <coughs> presentation or a book or something online. Uh, I was a natural resource manager, okay. planner in my past, and it's actually something I did in my driveway and down to the barn uh, to keep it from washing out. Where did you get your materials to do that? Was that some another look? I, I tell you what, we had a problem with the driveway washing out, the gravel mm -hmm. on the driveway. I went to, I went to, um, I've known about the Mount Royal Light Clay since college many moons ago. Mm -hmm. And I just went to Ingalls and bought about four bags of stuff and dumped it where I needed it and then I planted it. Um, so I just went to Ingalls, but if we were doing it like this, we would go to a wholesale source. Yeah, true. Okay. No, that's good. I'm saying I, I have, I've heard of other things like that, but not that specifically. Um, you know, a lot of the Virginia Creeper Trail. We've been up there. It's not paved. You know, it's no. a gravel fine development <coughs> south of Black Mountain, but um, on a state highway, which surprised me. The sidewalks are not paved. They're mm -hmm. of kind of gravel fine. Mm -hmm. um, crushed gravel and so there's from a cost standpoint cheaper there are some additional maintenance implications from that but um, the way our creeks and things are here two or three floods <coughs> with an asphalt path can be in pretty bad shape where if it's not paved you go out there small grader throw some materials down and you're good if you've seen the, the greenway in Franklin you can see where it's flooded and there's pock marks in the greenway you know, from that that need to go back and be repaired. So I'm, anything, I think there's some opportunities for not having to default to a paved greenway trail 
Mm -hmm. Still, for accessibility and, and use with people with strollers and other things, it can be done. Right? So I think that's a very valid consideration. I can't recall the name of the specific plant, but it's actually has taken <coughs> over where the old roadbed on um, 143 is between here and Stokoa Gap. And there's a, uh, there's a place on the side of the road, and it's it, um, probably by the end of the session, I'll recall what the name <laughs> of it is. I can see it, I can feel it, you know, I can smell it, I can taste it, and I can't think of the name of it. But it's um, it actually would, we could do a test piece and see if it would work. Mm -hmm. And if it would stand that level of traffic. And I've seen trails too that were, or there were former rail trails where there were more rural areas where if you, if you didn't know it was a, a bike trail, you would think it was a road because it just had the directional uh, uh, worn areas that were bare but had planting elsewhere in it. Okay, any other, any questions from <coughs> the group or comments or other ideas? Like I said, I want to collect those because what, I'm using this to do is kind of give us direction within the plan. We're going to hand the same sheets out um, at the great meeting. So some other things with the pedestrian plan. Our goal is to have it uh, finished sometime during the summer. I think we had for about, uh, when I gave Rick the original schedule in the proposal, you know, it was assuming maybe we'd have this meeting in December. So we're, you know, a month off of that. But time-wise, that shouldn't affect us too much. Um, the, the firm Equinox Environmental out of Asheville that I've worked with on greenways and trails planning, um, their landscape architect is helping us on this project and I've tasked him with going into the GIS data, looking at the specific parcel configurations and looking at the greenway trail um, that was considered in reimagining Robbinsville. So that is what he's going to be tasked with. He's going to come out here and do some field work. Um, Hopefully, before the foliage gets back on the trees, that's mm -hmm. you know the best time to do that. I, I guess that that kind of ties into what I wanted to say. <laughs> One of the big concerns with our greenway system, whatever it is, is we've got to have a way to screen some of the eyesore kind of stuff that's along those creeks. We've got trailer parks that are in pretty bad shape in some cases, and there's some, there's you know, we've got to figure out a way to solve that problem somehow. Good point. Because even if you have a, a nice greenway, you got all that stuff on it, mm -hmm. it's not going to be very nice. I think a lot of trees and stuff is going to screen a lot of that stuff. It's important. Uh, the most important thing when somebody comes into the area is to try to get their attention, you know. Uh, first impression is always the last impression usually. Uh, the more trees that we could possibly fit in that they'll allow us to do, the better. And a lot of it's going to have to be evergreen in some places. Yeah, that's true. And the heads need to be high enough to where they're not going to hang down and be in the way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, grown in a, in a tight environment at the nurseries when they grow tall and then you got your head at the top and then they can expand when you find them out. Any, uh, any <coughs> big concerns, fatal flaws, something that you think could throw a wrench into it? Any hey, the biggest, the biggest problem is going to be <laughs> landowner land cooperation. Uh, wow. yeah. And, <coughs> yeah. yes. And hopefully, maybe getting out on foot again and walking and talking, because actually it just would improve the property to mm -hmm. clear the areas around our streams and mm -hmm. so forth. And it would probably help to stop a lot of that pollution that we see in the stream. Hopefully, it will. Maybe again back to education. It is, and you know, I think. One, one possible way to approach it is, is through easements on people's property that don't want to sell the property. Mm -hmm. At least give us a, an easement on it so that we can do it. And we, we would improve the property in the process for right. them. Um, so that, yeah. That and we have, the, we have the maps that show where the sewer lines run that have the easements. I know at least um, <coughs> along uh, on the back side of the bypass behind mm -hmm. the commercial strip is where one of them I don't know with the creek running up to Stanley if there's a sewer line there or where that may run. It's usually if those easements are in place, you might already have a footprint. Yeah. Oh, so man, I, think man, a lot I of have thought that. The, the town of the county. Yeah. The town should have a good good maps, locations of all those sewer lines, but 
They've been doing a lot of sort of. We've got them. I just only produce. They'd only produce okay. them for the, the streetscape plan. We haven't gotten to that. The point. other thing that I think will help us is the FEMA uh, situation here with the, with the floodplain. Mm -hmm. uh, that might might be a way to because a lot you can't build on land near this creeks now, and so and I think the landowners are beginning to recognize that, and so they may be more willing to allow, allow us to do something. So um, so great, I got some good notes. I want to collect those. Uh, I mentioned in April if we're going to do the health impact assessment workshop. What that's going to be is um, similar to today, um, we will send out a couple weeks ahead of time to those that are uh, participating in it um, uh, what we call a, a workshop primer document that just kind of sums up what we find in, in any local health data and any other concerns in combination with what we're looking to do with the plan. And we'll ask people, some of them may be very similar questions, uh, but with different stakeholders and others in the room. I want to convene this same group. I haven't decided yet if it'll be best to do it before the health impact assessment workshop or after. But when we get into implementation, it's all about who has the roles and responsibilities. For different things, whether it's a town, a county, a DOT, a health department, a utility company, whatever it may be. Um, I want to go through a process of what we call the give-get grid. And that's really just identifying, okay, we've identified these top five or top ten implementation. Who are the partners? And the partners, hopefully, that are in the room, but from your perspective as well, what are those partners likely, we, what do we want them to give? as part of this project, but anybody that gives something, whether it's manpower, money, land, what do they get? You know, there's an expectation that they receive something. Kind of flush out what those are and get folks on the same page that'll help in the implementation. So those are kind of the, the two key ways we're going to get at framing these action steps for implementation when we get uh, to the end of the plan. And like I said, with uh, Fred with Equinox looking more specifically at the Greenway. Um, facility to flush out more specifics on that. So I want to give you enough time to get over to